Hello, welcome to the next session of management of new products and services. If you remember in the last session uh, where we looked at this whole process of matching strategic value proposition with a customer segment. I had mentioned about this concept of uh, minimum viable product, which is today a very uh, well practiced uh, process because of the market velocity ever increasing product life cycles becoming uh, more and more compressed. Uh, and also to reduce the overall cost, cost by way of money, cost by way of time of product development, uh, we have this uh, sort of paradigm which we call the lean product development process. So, minimum viable product is uh, one of the elements of uh, this uh, lean product development process. So, originally uh, uh, famous companies like Toyota in automobile uh, product design uh, adopted this lean product design methodology, but from that uh, it has been made popular by people like uh, Dan Olson and others. Uh, and there are some very useful uh, and easily available books are there on uh, lean products, uh, lean product methodology, lean product playbook, they come in different names. You can just uh, search and you will find many and I will recommend that some of you who are seriously into uh, product design, product management that you should go through. These are usually uh, uh, short books and uh, very well written, so you will easily understand. But some of the key principles that are covered by these books I will discuss in today's session. So, the lean product process uh, basically uh, has the following steps that you see on the screen that you determine your target customer. This is always the fountain head as we discussed even in the last session. This is where you first start segmenting and starting with a well defined focus on a particular type of customers. Then you identify and understand those customer needs in depth, their pains and what gains you can uh, offer. And then you define your value proposition. Up to these, these three steps are what we discussed in detail in the last session. Now, once you have your value proposition, then you get into what we call the minimum viable product. And that is what we are going to uh, discuss about this whole process. So, those are the next three blocks that you see on your screen, this last three that specify your minimum viable product create your minimum viable product prototype and test your minimum viable product with customers. So, the first three blocks we covered in the last session and these three blocks we are going to cover in this particular session. First step de to determine your target customers, I emphasize again we discussed in the last session as well that always you have to get out of the building, you know not in the office, you have to go out in the field where customers are. So, go to Gemba as the Japanese say, go to the shop floor, go to the marketplace, go to the store and uh, conduct interviews and develop customer persona. Now, this is uh, I, I think briefly discussed this concept in some earlier session, but today I am going to discuss it in a little bit more detail that a persona means a complete person and a profile. So, which means we in this process we do not want to deal with customers just as a kind of a type or you know part of uh, a demographic profile or psychographic profile. We want to identify the customers by name, uh, what they look like um, and you quote that conveys what they most care about you know take one or 
two, three things that they have said and their job title, their demographic position, their needs, their goals in life, their uh, uh, relevant motivations and attitudes, uh, what kind of tasks and behaviors are most important to them, their frustration points with the current solution, the level of expertise and knowledge that is available with the customer, uh, product usage, uh, in what context, in what environment they use the product, all these must be captured in the customer persona. And I think uh, you should also uh, add to this kind of things like what other products do they use, what other products they buy, what brands they prefer and so on. So, you may be actually trying to develop a uh, running shoe uh, for senior citizens who may have uh, some knee problem and so on. So, you need to develop a shoe which is uh, they still need to exercise, they still need to jog, but you have to take care that they do not have uh, problems with their knees or ankles and so on. If you are studying to develop a product of that type, then obviously you will have to look into all the uh, pains and problems and therefore offer solutions. But to come to that particular decision, uh, the design profile or uh, brief for the product, you have to also look at what other stuff they buy and use today, what kind of um, you know uh, track suits they buy, what kind of um, uh, aftershave they use if they at all use or uh, what soaps, what other lifestyle stuff they have. So, basically we are trying to understand not only uh, the customers income and uh, uh, address and name and uh, what they look like, but also we try to understand the customer in more details. So, psychographic, uh, physical details, uh, other preferences, so that we get a complete picture of the persona. And uh, I mentioned that uh, you, you have to take some quotes from the customer, uh, some key quotes which will give you the direction. Like here I have to illustrate, I have chosen actually a service, um, a quite an intangible service. Uh, as you know today uh, among the students, particularly in top institutes, there is tremendous pressure um, and tremendous competitiveness across actually almost all institutes today education is becoming more and more fiercely competitive and therefore, we have uh, due to not only due to that reason, but due to other various socio-political economic reasons. We also have uh, more and more uh, depression among the students. We have even in uh, some uh, areas and some states, we have uh, addiction to uh, drugs or uh, cigarettes or alcohol and other problems. And so, uh, we the need of counseling for de addiction or need for counseling for um, you know handle depression, um, uh, need for counseling to make them suit capable of handling failures. This particularly happens in top institutes. Uh, that need of counseling, the counseling service, which earlier used to be just a small. Uh, uh, site service in an institute has now become a central uh, uh, and therefore, this whole counseling service now needing volunteers and uh, large institutes uh, they have like IITs or IIMs etcetera, they have counseling service within, but in many other cases we need uh, volunteer counselors who are capable and well trained to handle large number of uh, students who may not have uh, this facility available within their institute or they may need more specialized help. So, uh, the service therefore, I have chosen is a uh, service that trains this kind of volunteer counselors to make them capable of handling the uh, counseling assignment. So, as a counselor volunteer to learn how to communicate more effectively with young adults, so that young students that I coach against addiction will trust me. Uh, this is a statement taken from uh, a, a customer of this particular service and we are looking at how to develop a minimum viable product, which is going to respond to this kind of need for these people. 
So, counselor needs are uh, less complicated applications of psychological principles, uh, easy to understand because many times these volunteers are themselves actually students of engineering or students of uh, medicine or management. And so, they are not professional uh, you know psychiatrists and so on, but so you need less complicated applications of the principles, how to regress progress activities to fit. Uh, the problem level. So, some people may need very intensive counseling, some people may need light uh, you know casual counseling, how to keep the teens interested and engaged. This is a very major challenge, uh, because many people actually uh, uh, they reluctantly come to counseling, then they drop out. And so, to keep them engaged, so that the process itself can happen is a very important need behavior management, time efficient alternatives. Uh, and easy to use activities in an easy to uh, use format. So, uh, a volunteer who is an engineering student or a medical student wants to become a counselor and you are actually creating a service to enable them to perform their counseling activities. And uh, this is a typical need a counselor has. So, you see this is what we are talking about the understanding a customer segments needs. Um, and this need analysis will tell us uh, the pains and the problems with the current solutions and some of those depictions are already there. Uh, this is a capture from an actual case. So, you can actually therefore, see how uh, the counselor needs are to be framed. And then you see this is what we call a value proposition that means, something that you are trying to design your offering and then on the left hand side uh, you uh, the lower left you have this the current uh, marketplace offerings and what the customer needs. So, the intersection of these three, uh, this is the Venn diagram, this is what we call the targeted value proposition. So, your offering is not only the value proposition, there will be so many other things in your value proposition, but you are trying to find uh, in within your offering definitely uh, issues that are not covered well by the current marketplace offerings and what the customer needs all three sec intersection gives you the core uh, value proposition on which your service will be designed. So, counselor training value proposition is uh, provide volunteer counselors training that is time efficient, user friendly and easy to learn. Okay. Given that specify your minimum viable product. Uh, so, the feature set will be develop more user stories, you know, uh, case histories, case studies, uh, features, uh, these are some and then it, it should be something that, uh, you know, the whole package, the cost of the training and the training material, etcetera, should be such that can will be affordable for these kind of voluntary services. They may not be very cash rich, so they will have some subsidy coming from the institutes the people who are seeking counseling may provide their parents may provide some amount of money. But in many cases you know if you are addressing this market in tier 2, tier 3 cities and uh, even in the suburbs or even in the metros you know there will be many students who will not be able to afford uh, to pay high fees. So, you have to therefore, also look at ROI. So, counselor needs and uh, minimum viable product features simple and time efficient training. Uh, so, therefore, uh, uh, online videos that are accessible 24 by 7. So, are you reducing the cost by creating this kind of NPTEL type of uh, courses uh, online uh, uh, available, uh, uh, which can be first uh, studied by the volunteers. Then easy to use activities in an easy to use format, which will be they will come for a one day workshop and they will it will be uh, provided to them and uh, so that they can take it to the program. And then parents not understanding why possibly the addiction happened therefore, you also need. So, this is this is what happens from a, a deeper understanding of certain unspoken needs. So, we often find that actually uh, the parents themselves do not feel the need of seeking counseling. So, even though at home they can detect a child under a, a young teen in depression or they can uh, detect these addiction and other problems. They themselves 
uh, uh, they may feel it is a disease or they may beat up the uh, person, but they will not seek uh, counseling. So, there is also a need of in the minimum viable product a package where uh, parents awareness and sensitization uh, can be included. So, you are therefore, trying to build a prototype of a 3 hours workshop that with target parents that lets you test your hypothesis. Okay. So, uh, in, in doing that therefore, you are uh, going to follow this measure the build measure the effectiveness learn from the interaction and then again build. So, you, you see it is a, um, a loop and because as we have discussed even in many earlier session that today in product development we do not believe in a linear process of uh, you know start to finish uh, stage after stage. We know that we need many uh, iteration, we need many interactive uh, back and forth uh, and that is why uh, this uh, loop is uh, shown in front of you where uh, this to develop this say a 3 hour workshop for parents you actually need to create first a package and this is the key point that in the minimum viable product scenario we do not actually uh, try to come up with the best finished uh, package for this uh, uh, 3 hour workshop. We will uh, first develop a, a rough cut and then maybe with some trusted uh, parents who already uh, feel the need of this sensitization and uh, uh, their uh, awareness. So, you uh, they already believe in it. So, you bring them in uh, present the thing take their suggestions. So, you are actually co opting uh, in some way what we call expert customers and you are co opting them as advisors in your design process. I am discussing this with respect to this uh, a, a, a package of training for uh, volunteer counselors a service product, but it can be applied to anything. It can be applied to you know some high tech products, it can be in fact, uh, this minimum viable product approach is widely practiced in uh, places like Silicon Valley or in uh, Bangalore software development companies or people who are developing games, video games. In many high tech areas, the minimum viable product today is a well practiced uh, uh, process. So, lastly uh, I, uh, I want to highlight that actually therefore, the minimum viable product is not a uh, extremely uh, complex uh, set of activities. It basically says and you already know these terminologies uh, very well you know we say uh, beta customers uh, or alpha product and beta product. So, alpha product means you know what uh, just a prototype uh, which is just internal um, and you, you actually uh, analyze the performance internally and then the beta product means beta customers are customers who are trusted customers. That means, if your product has flaws then they will not bad mouth your product they will rather try to help you to take care of uh, those shortcomings. So, it is a kind of things which earlier we used to call test marketing, but today I would say it is more like co-creation with trusted customers. I mean uh, look at what Microsoft or many other software companies or even game development companies uh, they do today. So, they first come up with say a new game or a, a new software and then they will release it to maybe 1000 customers. Uh, with software products it is easy it is it, they will just be electronically given the product. And these are people who take pride in who can find how many bugs in the shortest possible time. So, they almost these 1000 people will be almost competing with each other that oh I found this bug and this is how you solve it and then I found this bug and this is how you solve it. Oh here the game was not behaving properly then I find that this is how you actually um, make it. So, what happens is at this stage because they are trusted customers you will actually often share your uh, development codes or uh, the software process with them. 
and they will work furiously because they take pride in it they love it uh, they uh, and the same thing as i was mentioning that you some parents who already know the critical need of parent support in a, a de addiction counseling program you bring them in and show this is how i'm going to make a 3 hours uh, training package for uh, parents and then take their advice to say no no this is you know you need to expand on this or you need to add this particular point or you need to give this kind of examples etc and then uh, similarly in software i mean just watch how microsoft does it they come up with a product and they will actually suppose a new version of windows they will release it to this beta customers they will furiously work and so at that stage the product may have 100 bugs but these 1000 people will work furiously they will come up with solution so with one round or two rounds of uh, iteration actually the next product will be within a very short time the product will become almost bug free they continue to therefore work on and that's why you know that uh, these uh, you many of these software many of these uh, games you buy and then you keep on getting patches or uh, fixes, uh, bug fixes, patches for improvement, uh, security improvement and so on. Fundamentally that is coming from this whole concept of minimum viable product. That means, the first product you got is not the finished product. It is actually in the earlier uh, uh, paradigm you would not actually be able to release that product, but today we do this we do not release it uh, straight away uh, to the general market. You know for example, say uh, Reliance Geo when they launched their uh, quite innovative way of the voice where they were able to offer the voice telephony free of cost because it is actually riding on the uh, internet protocol and uh, so they uh, this uh, introduce this. Uh, to their staff to begin with. Then as the staff gave feedback and certain things were worked out, they went to the relatives of their staff and their friends. Again, so you see you are going by circle by circle retaining the whole so called circle of trust. So, first where uh, uh, your own employee staff then they extended it to their family members and their friends, then they extended it to people they are who were recommended by their staff. Right? Then when they had already fixed many of the problems in rolling out this quite uh, uh, unique uh, approach uh, compared to what was happening just 2 years back in mobile telephony. Then they started rolling out to the customers. Uh, they of course, did other disruption that we discussed uh, in a previous session. So, whether it is Microsoft, whether it some of the major game developers across the world and uh, people like even Reliance Geo in uh, our case. So, you can see for both products and services for hard products for soft products this minimum viable product uh, introduction and then continuous bug fixation co-opting the customer's help has become a, uh, a lean way of developing uh, new products. And today uh, this is also done for uh, series changes or product uh, uh, extensions, product improvements, product augmentation in all these areas we use uh, this. So, key remains however, that all these you do not by out of your own imagination or talking among yourselves. You get out of the building and talk to the customers and get engaged with them and that is how you arrive at uh, a better and better and better product. So, the key point here we are saying is that uh, which is there in the right in the beginning in the set of steps that you after you have value proposition you have the brief then you come up with this minimum viable uh, feature set then you create your minimum viable prototype then you interact with your beta customers and trusted customers take their input 
and, and, and test it with them and then come up with a product and you keep on continuously improving on the product by uh, taking their inputs. So, this is the journey of the uh, minimum viable product and in a later session we will discuss another interesting concept that goes hand in hand with minimum viable product which we call pivoting. Thank you.